Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. learners young science enthusiast non science enthusiast everybody who has the hope to be of some creative energy to this world give some hope to the future of this world i welcome all of you to this all new introduction to science fiction studies lecture series in this series we are going to discuss a lot about science fiction and a lot about life to begin let me tell you what is science fiction science fiction also called as sci-fi and now a very short form has evolved as sf it was first discussed by a publisher an american publisher called hugo gunsback in the 1920s he came up first with the term science fiction that we know right now in this era luxembourgish american editor he was not only an american editor he had a descent from the luxembourg and magazine publisher and inventor before he died he had 80 patents to his name so he had a lot of inventions to his name he created small electrical batteries and it's uh, developed its designs created immense possibilities in the field of science fiction as well by becoming one of the top most publishers when he started publishing the works which we called as science fiction people throughout the world came to know that oh there is a genre there is an area of literature which can be considered as science fiction which is not fantasy which is not quest which is not about tragedy comedy but a completely different element which combines and encompasses all these things within itself that is science fiction so some people call it 75% literature interwoven with 25% science but let me tell you this is something called as hard science fiction this topic we will be discussing in the next lecture when we will be discussing speculative fiction in 1916 there was a term which was introduced to people this term was called scientification of literature so if there is a story where the journey into uh, the moon or another planet or time travel is being discussed there is a scientific aspect they are using a device they are using a doorway they are using a pathway all these things become a part or an element of science fiction element of science fiction or a part of science fiction all of these became scientification of this notion in 1934 science fiction league is the earliest association that we know about science fiction authors short story writers editors illustrators films fanzines everybody they came together thinking of developing this discipline and establishing it as uh, any any other genre like the drama the tragedy the comedy the tragic comedy so this will be the science fiction literature they came up with the idea of science fiction league in 1953 and since then we have the hugo awards this hugo awards is again named after hugo gunsback who first coined the term science fiction or actually popularized it among people the hugo awards are given to authors sf writers editors illustrators films fanzines fanzines this word can be broken into fan plus magazine writers so everybody who had 
two pens could buy a magazine or everybody can contribute to a magazine. Magazines are published on a weekly basis and they require a lot of content. So they asked everybody, each and every common people to contribute to them. That is why fanzines became very popular by World Science Fiction Society. This is one of the most important influential group of science fiction uh, enthusiasts who have come together under this society or association after Science Fiction League. This association gives this award prestigious award of the Hugo Awards. In 1954, sci-fi, earlier we used to call it science fiction. Then from science fiction, we moved on to the word sci-fi. Sci-fi was made popular by Forrest J. Ackerman, an American magazine editor, science fiction writer and literary agent. He was commenting on something and he shortened the form of science fiction into sci-fi. Understanding science fiction. So, if we read science fiction from the point of view of science, we have two words, science and fiction. This can be called, we are doing maths in literature class. If we take understanding a common and then we break down this particular bracket, so understanding is multiplied to science and understanding is multiplied to fiction, so together they will be understanding science and understanding fiction. So moving forward, if we are not clear about the two domains or the two extremely different domains, people can hardly imagine that science can see face to face with literature. Science can look at fiction and they could both be friends. How is that even possible? But this is the very best part of science fiction that when there is imagination, there is both science and both literature. Let me tell you why. It is a given fact that all the best astrophysicists in our world have fantastic imagination and creative skills because they can visualize this space without even looking at it. They visualize space through maths, through physics. They have a brilliant creative or innovative brain. Science fiction has the similar kind, similar features. It tells you stories about people, about land that you have never visited, about technology that you have never known about. We talk about artificial intelligence today, the robots um, taking over the world, the AI revolution. Everybody, every human being is enslaved by the artificial intelligence that is attacking our planet or the aliens which are coming from outer space and attacking our planet. Is this even real? Have you ever seen anything like that? But no, there is an entire range of literature, entire species of human beings who has written all of those things, who has imagined all of those things in their head. And they are the proud contributors to science fiction. Understanding science fiction, the science part. If we just have a look at what do we understand by science, let's go to Merriam-Webster dictionary. From now onwards, whenever I'll be delivering this lecture, whenever I write this word MWD, it will mean Merriam-Webster's dictionary. It's one of the best dictionaries. You can consult it from time to time. Science. This is the first meaning that is given over there. Knowledge or a system of knowledge covering general truths or the operation of general laws, especially as obtained and tested through scientific methods. If there is a system, for example, take physics. There is a system, there is a value system, there is numerical expressions, there are equations, there are constants, there is Newton's constant, there is Kepler's constant, there is gravitational constant. All these values are there. 
and they do not vary from place to place they that is why they are called constants they have a system of knowledge the knowledge is systematized this will be forever true if water boils at 100 degree centigrade it will boil at 100 degree centigrade anywhere in the planet given that the atmospheric pressure is the same now here is another fact if water has something called anomalous expansion at 4 degree centigrade it will have anomalous expansion at 4 degree centigrade throughout the planet given that the atmospheric pressure is standard so this system of knowledge we have gathered through scientific experiments somebody did an experiment in germany published a paper floated the knowledge that knowledge is taken by somebody in india he did the same experiment and the same result came then he floated the result somebody in australia did the same experiment and the same result came he floated the result and from all around the world everybody said that yes this is true this is universal so this is the system of knowledge that we have established through science if let's say medical science one of the fastest developing scientific sectors everywhere they are treating diseases they are uh, the doctors are devising fresher uh, ways of treating dangerous and deadly diseases once the influenza virus was not um, something human beings could fight with but now we can fight with because people have experimented what are the uh, drugs what are the medicines that cure influenza virus and they have seen that throughout the world this medicine cures influenza virus and therefore we have a knowledge system anytime you see now uh, what about the dosage yes if it is a child the dose will be smaller if it is an adult the dosage will be different so again you see there is a knowledge system covering general truths or the operation of general laws laws of motion laws of electromagnetic theory um, the Kepler's um, laws of planetary motion, the laws of gravity, everything, the Archimedes principle, the uh, mathematical expressions, the laws of speed, uh, momentum, velocity, everything has a mathematical expression. And all of these things are true to its very core. They are systematized especially as obtained and tested through scientific methods again only a theory cannot be science in itself it can be a theory but it has to be experimented it has to be realized in a particular instant but let me tell you there is also the area of astrophysics which generally is more of a theoretical science because you cannot conduct experiments on other planets what you can do is do the math thereby astrophysics is considered one of the you know very um, the, uh, one of the domains of science which mostly relies on theory but even then stephen hawking a very famous astrophysics he gave the concept of black hole simply by doing mathematics he never lived to see a black hole but we know that there is a black hole now and the nasa has sent pictures of the event horizon so everything has a system a knowledge system following are the characteristics of science objectivity i am not personally telling you that this uh, pen is um, solid it is black in color i am looking at it very objectively yes even if you look at it from your camera point of view you will also tell me yes ma'am this pen is truly black and it is solid because it is not liquid it is not floating around and it is not in a gaseous form that it will float around and diffuse in air so you and i both agree very objectively that this is a solid thing verifiability now when i drop this pen somewhere i will know that it will bounce back because it is a solid object so i will know that if you want to verify you can come outside the camera 
come to this location we are sitting in and recording this lecture and see for yourself is this the pen is this the same pen and is it solid you will see that it is the same ethical neutrality i am telling you the pen is solid does not mean i am good it does not have anything to do with ethics if i tell you that this pen i i am telling you because i am a very good teacher that this pen is solid doesn't make any sense it has nothing to do with being good or being bad i can be a criminal but i can still tell you the pen is solid so no ethical boundary systematic exploration let me come back to the previous point once again this is something which has recently been discussed in many issues that experimenting on animals is bad but let me tell you all the life curing drugs all the life curing medicines especially the vaccines that has eradicated polio that has treated all the um diseases like chicken pox small pox measles they were first of all experimented on animals and only then given to human beings but people say it is not very good of a person to kill animals we are not killing or the scientists they look at it from the objective and absolute ethical neutrality they are not uh, monsters who want to kill animals they have this thing that it is for the betterment or for the longevity of human life that is why we are experimenting so there is a controversy in that issue systematic exploration so if you are conducting an experiment you will just not do everything all at a time you will not mix and match suppose you want to find uh, you you want to uh, create let's say for example take this equation h2so4 plus nacl maybe you might not understand this but that's okay h2so4 nacl na so4 na2so4 na2so4 plus h2o so this is uh, something very interesting hcl so yes now we have the correct equation okay h2so4 plus nacl na2so4 plus 2hcl this is a process you cannot just put water into everything and expect this to happen if only this chemical equation will happen if only there is a process you will take a flask you will take a beaker you will pour one thing into the other and only the reaction will happen you cannot make it happen if you don't add the ingredients so first you have to collect the ingredients then you have to pour one into the other and then the reaction will take place so systematic exploration reliability science is something which rely on if i uh have you seen a child being thrown up in the air and caught by the parents i'm sure you have seen that we rely on science we rely on gravity thinking that yes if i throw my child up like this my child will come down we rely on gravity had we not relied on gravity we would never have thrown our child up what if our child goes up and never comes down but we rely on the gravitational principles given by newton isn't it so reliability precision we know how precise it will be say for example a gun if you are using a gun you know exactly where the bullet is going to go so precision accuracy say for example the laptops that you are using it accurately does everything you want it to do abstractness science can be very abstract at times every time you are doing a mathematical equation you are solving a mathematical or physics problem 
you are not seeing it in front of your eyes but you are doing it in your mind so there can be abstractions in science and lastly predictability i know the apple will fall on my head if i sit under an apple tree now let us move on to the fiction part of understanding fiction have you seen the disclaimer that is displayed on the screen right before a movie starts if you have not read it carefully after this lecture you watch any movie or web series and you look at the disclaimer part here is what it generally shows this story all names characters and incidents portrayed in this production are fictitious no identification with actual persons living or deceased deceased means dead places buildings and products is intended or should be inferred that means whatever i'm showing you in the show has never happened i'm giving you the disclaimer i will write it over here disclaimer it is already written whenever you are writing fiction you wave off all the claims it is not my story no person in this story has anything to do with me that is why in some of the stories where it is actually showing some president or some political figure being ridiculed people get angry so that is the disclaimer that there is no relation to any of the person people dead or alive but this particular idea of fiction makes fiction very powerful because you tell beforehand now you can write anything you have already taken that privilege you have already taken that license from the viewer it is imaginary you can imagine anything right now i am imagining that at this very moment a very big load of books will fall on my head from above god will send me the best science fiction short stories novels movie series tv series everything and will put them in a bag and throw it on my head right at this moment i just made that up so my imagination has no limits i can think that i'm standing in on top of the um uh, mount everest i'm standing at top of, on top of the mount everest and looking down a, on the indian peninsula and the weather is very clear it is warm there and i'm wearing sunglasses and i'm getting sun tan imagine is it even possible scientifically no but suppose i tell you that i have a device which can create a weather pattern only let's say for 10 meters or so weather pattern of its own i have that kind of device and therefore i have gone to mount everest there is plenty of oxygen everybody can breathe and everybody can be happy healthy i'm let me tell you mount everest on the top there is barely any air the temperature is maybe minus 100 degrees people instantly die but uh, that is my imagination prone to interpretation if there is a work of fiction how can it not be interpreted every time you read a fiction it has a different meaning sometimes let's say it is a story about a mother taking care of her kid and also taking care of her dying mother so she is taking care of the two generations she has if you interpret the story by the circumstances it will give you a kind of look into the society the uh, response of the people but if you take a look at the same story from the mother's point of view you will see how it is very difficult for a woman to balance between the two taking care of the young and taking care of the old are two completely different disciplines so interpretation matters if you look at it from the uh, legal angle or the societal angle she will be looked at as the best uh, mother or a child uh, person can have so all of these things have are prone to interpretation not universal the condition 
uh, the poetry in our country is different from the poetry let's say in US. The poetry of the northern India has different language, has different verb patterns, has different rhythms, everything from the language, word patterns and rhythm in the southern India and in the states of eastern India, western India, central India, even within India there are so many varieties, styles, forms that it is not universal. You cannot say that this particular theme is universal, that it is the same everywhere. No, it is not science. And last is unreliable. We were, remember we were talking about reliability when we were talking about science, that the apple is going to fall on my head if I sit under an apple tree. But in literature, you cannot rely even on the narrator of the story. The narrator of the story can lie to you. The person who is telling the story is lying to you. This is also something which is a part of literature. Now, let me give you a, a small course overview. What are the things that you are going to expect in this course? Number one, introduction to various SF works and knowing the history. You will get to know the history of science fiction, what was before, what was after, what are the changes, how the process went on, how did science fiction evolve and now where we are standing. Next is discussing famous authors and their seminal works on science fiction studies. Of course, if there is a genre, if there is an entire field of studies, we must get ourselves acquainted with all the notable authors, all the authors who have left their mark, all the authors who have set a benchmark, set a standard to science fiction studies. Exploring various themes and their symbols. Science fiction, short stories, novels, poetry, drama, everything has symbols. Everything has different themes. Whenever we read a piece of literature, don't you think we read the character list, we read the themes, we read the plot, we make a summary in our mind and try to understand why are, why are the characters behaving like this. So we are also going to talk about the themes. Recognition of science fiction as a major literary genre, awards, conferences, seminar, courses, etc. We will also look at what is the current situation of science fiction throughout the world? What are the societies that are working? What are the associations that are working on this field? Who are there along with us? Are we the only people on this planet who are talking about science fiction at this hour? Or are there more like us, more enthusiasts who are willing to contribute and devote hours to the studies, writing, creation, innovation, all of these things are there and of course the conferences, these people are the same people who are organizing conferences, seminars so that like-minded people can get together and talk. Discussion, uh, making a discourse is one of the most difficult tasks for any genre but once it has established a discourse, once it has brought major things into popular discussion, it will be established for time immemorial. Then utopia and dystopia, these two concepts are very interesting. These two are actually imaginary places, places and imaginary situations. In case of utopia, it is a very good place, a very good situation where everybody is happy. Nobody has a higher class, nobody has a lower class. Everybody is equal. They belong to the same class. Everybody has same property, same benefits. Everything is the same. But in dystopia, it is a nightmarish reality. It's a nightmare. Everybody is suffering. Everybody is in pain. Some people get extra privileges. Other people do not even get food and basic medical needs. So that kind of thing we are discussing when we are coming to utopia and dystopia. 
in utopia you can talk about the world uh, that uh, Sekhawat Hussain has talked about in her story Sultana's Dream where women are doing all the important tasks in the society and men are captivated. Of course, it is a, not a utopia for everybody, but it's a utopia for the feminist world. But dystopia is something that we can see in Brave New World, where people are classified as laborers and they are bred like clones. They are cloned and bred very uh, in a targeted manner that these people belong to only the worker section, these people belong to only the ruler section. So this kind of uh, condition, then you have the story of the handmaid's tale where uh, Margaret Atwood had shown that fertility has become only, uh, for people have become less and less fertile. For that reason, only the fertile women are captured and forcibly impregnated. So these things create a horror kind of situation, sense in our mind and the world that they create are very terrible. So those are nightmarish realities and called dystopias. Lastly, we will cover the point research scope in science fiction. See, whenever we study a field, it must be inherently very interesting that yes, these are the information that we are getting so much to study. But let me tell you, once you really study something deeply, you will start to see the gaps in it. What you will notice is this information is there, but this information is missing. So research is exactly for filling out the gaps. If you are interested in this field, you can go for research also in this field. Here is list of the notable men science fiction authors. I have written men because there is a separate list for women and non-binary science fiction writers. Non-binary we will discuss in the next slide. Let us have a look. Arthur C. Clarke, Robert Henley, Isaac Asimov, Jules Verne, a. G. Wells, Aldous Huxley, Kazuo Ishiguro, Jayant Narlikar, Satyajit Ray. We will be discussing science fiction authors from England, USA, France, Japanese come British national and from India. All of these at least one, two, three, all these three people are considered the big three in science fiction writing. They have contributed immensely to the field of science fiction studies. We will study them in a separate lecture which is completely devoted to big three. And others have contributed but their contribution is on a different scale and in a different range. Jules Verne, A.G. Wells, they were uh, more or less in the same timeline. Huxley is 20th century. Kazuo Ishiguro is writing now when you are reading, um, when you are taking this lecture. He has uh, received the Nobel Prize for Literature in 2017. So he is a very recent author. Chant Nalikar is an Indian science fiction writer and we have Satyajit Ray. So all these people have contributed tremendously to the field of science fiction studies. We will be studying them in details. Notable women and non-binary writers. See, I told you we are going to discuss it in a different point of view. Non-binary is something, um, a concept where people identify themselves as neither men nor uh, women. No, they don't say that no, we are not men, we are not women, we are non binary. You cannot combine and uh, you cannot give us option to choose between choose your identity as man, choose your identity as woman. You cannot do that to us. We are non binary, we belong to the queer community. So, there is also a list of that. 
Mary Shelley, Charlie Jane Anders, Ursula K. Le Guin, Margaret Atwood, Octavia Butler, Joanna Russ, April Daniels. So these are the authors that has been discussed in this course and there are other authors. Let me tell you, this list and this list is not conclusive. We have discussed many other authors in this lecture series. These are some of the notable names that you need to remember. When somebody discusses science fiction with you, they mostly expect any science fiction enthusiast to at least know these basic names because they have been the founding members, the pillars of establishing science fiction as a major literary and cultural genre in the 21st century. Science fiction according to famous authors. You have heard enough from me. I have discussed a lot of aspects truly, but to understand or listen to the words of experiencing science fiction from the uh, thought pattern of famous authors is a completely different experience. Let us have a look at the slides. Isaac Asimov, one of the hard science fiction writers, he discusses science fiction like this. Science fiction can be defined as that branch of literature which deals with the reaction of human beings to changes in science and technology. It's a branch of literature, it's not a branch of science, which deals with the reaction of human beings. If I see a robot today, I can imagine this robot will turn into a human being someday. It will be so advanced, it will be so knowledgeable that it will know what is the difference between life and death. A machine is not supposed to know that. That robot will know how to read social cues. If I have come back from home, I'm tired and I'm feeling down, that robot will know that yes, now I will have to serve the master of the house or the mistress of the house with a glass of water. That robot will be able to read social cues. This all of it I am imagining just by looking at a robot, let's say picking up a pen, only picking up a pen. But I have in my mind, oh, if it is able to pick up a pen today, it will be able to hold a plate tomorrow and it will also be able to bring water. So, my reaction to the technological evolution is my creativity that I have imagined a complete world where the robots are helping. Now, whoever has read my story is going to think in an opposite direction. What if the robot that is carrying the plate can also carry a knife? Will the robot think of it as enslaved and the master and the mistress of the house are those who are enslaving the robot. Will the robot not want to kill me? Then instead of a utopia where everybody, every robot is helping every human being, there will be a dystopia where every robot is killing every human beings. So our reaction to the idea of robotics has changed the entire situation of imagination. Once we have started writing stories about androids, once we have started seeing the future like in the movie The Terminator, where the Terminator is hunting for human beings, there is no going back. It will only evolve throughout the ages. Next is Robert A. Heinlein. A handy short definition of almost all science fiction might read realistic speculation about possible future events based solidly on adequate knowledge of the real world, past and present, and on a thorough understanding of the nature and significance of the scientific method. Robert Henlin was himself kind of a philosopher 
So whatever he thought about science fiction, he wrote down in very specific words. What did he say? He said realistic speculation. Yes, it is a meditation. Yes, it is a creativity. Yes, it is an imagination. But it is also realistic. It is not something fantastical like we will grow wings tomorrow. No, that is not possible because we have our human body has not evolved in a way that it uh, the wings can support the weight of the body. So the speculation, the meditation, the thought should be realistic. About a possible future, yes, once Leonardo da Vinci, the famous architect and painter and writer and inventor of the Renaissance period thought that there will be machines that can fly. But he was not able to make one. Did that stop him from making designs? No, he made all sorts of designs. What the Wright brothers invented in the 20th century is the aeroplane. They invented the aeroplane which was imagined by an architecture, come painter, come philosopher, come writer, come uh, sculptor, Leonardo da Vinci almost 500 years ago. So for da Vinci, flying was a possible future. For us, going to moon and living there is a possible future because of, we know Elon Musk has privatized space. If you have enough money, you can go to space and have an experience. Past and present and on a thorough understanding of the nature. We must have a thorough understanding of the natural world. We cannot write a story where the water is on the land and the land is on the water. It cannot be a story. There must be a realistic touch and there must be an understanding of the natural world. Significance of the scientific method. We must pay attention to scientific methodology. It is not that I can write anything in the name of science. If I consider that science can do something, I must also consider what science cannot do. If we start thinking of, let's say, there will be 10, um, there will be 10 dimensions in future and we will evolve in 10 dimensions. No, human beings live in an earth with three dimensions. That is length, breadth and height. These three dimensions are solid. You cannot write that there will be 10 dimensions. It is not possible. It should be adhering to the scientific method. The endless imaginary experiments with science, themes of science fiction. Now we will start thinking what are the themes that are there in this entire scenario of science fiction. Alien life, war of walls, the edge of tomorrow. These are some works that I will discuss in a little bit of details in the second or third lecture. Space travel. So one is alien life where Creatures from the other planets will come and invade and discuss and interact with our planet inhabitants, we the human race. Space travel, we are going to a different galaxy, we are going to a different planet, one planet person, one planet individual is invading another planet. All the space travel are a recurrent theme in science fiction studies. Time travel, I am going to the past, I am going to the future. From future people are coming to the present that I am living in. From past people are coming to the present that I am living in. So these things are there. Uh, you can go and watch Interstellar. Also there is a season, there is a web series called Dark which plays with the idea of time travel where three separate realities are working together. So it's a very fascinating series. If you want you can go and you will be able to understand how time can be different for different realities. Biowarfare, Resident Evil series. A deadly virus is spread among everybody, everybody becomes zombies and the zombies attack people. Biowarfare. Human cloning, the island never let me go. 
where humans are cloned for organ harvesting. Can you see what kind of dystopian society that is? What kind of nightmarish reality that is? I am a person who has given a clone, who has given a piece of DNA to a company. The DNA that I've given helps the company to manufacture a complete replica of me and store it, lock it up. So when my organs start to fail, when I my heart is weak, when my lungs start dying, I will call the company, hello, can you supply me a pair of lungs? So the company will go and rip off one of the lungs from that clone that I have uh, given money to the company for and will put that lung into my chest. Can you imagine the macabarish, the nightmarish society that can create? Because after all, the clones are human beings too. Okay, moving on. Human brain data backup, transcendence. It's a famous movie by Johnny Depp. It's an idea which has been expressed in multiple uh, works of literature. A uh, plug is connected to the head and all the data of the, all the information, all the knowledge is being backed up. This idea is also there in Avatar. If you have seen, it's a movie uh, directed by James Cameron. You will find this in also a lot of other movies like The Matrix, which talks about simulation. The idea of sending your mind, your consciousness, through a wire from your brain into another brain, that idea is also recurrent in popular science fiction works. Robots, AI, iRobot, Terminator series, Mad Max, all these series and movies, they have robots. They have AIs working for them. And every time you take a sweep at these movies, you will see the various you know, nuances, whether, uh, you know, especially in Mad Max, one of the series, you will find that uh, a robot has given birth to another robot. Is this even possible? No, it's not possible for us, but it is possible in that situation, in the creative situation. After all these discussion that we had, you will be very uh, disappointed, really, to go through this part of information that I am going to provide. There is a course called Five Great Works of Science Fiction, which is given by Dr. John Leonard, University of Cambridge, UK. And introduction of that course, he writes something which is deeply sad when it comes to science fiction studies. Science fiction is often denigrated as unliterary but at its best is an extremely powerful engagement with real, often troubling issues from theology to ecology and beyond. So whenever I try to talk about science fiction to anybody, people often question, is it even literature? Are you talking literature? Are you talking about classical literature? Is it even serious work of art? People have almost uh, zero or minus level lack of awareness regarding science fiction. The, one of the chief factors for or one of the main reasons for this is we, the science fiction enthusiasts, we the academicians have ourselves not been convinced that this is a major genre because people like to keep science and literature in separate cupboards. Science scientists, they fear that if they uh, enter the realm of literature, their importance will be diminished. And if literature people hear that uh, they are supposed to enter the science field, then they will feel uh, dehumanized, belittled, they will not have any respect. So it is a very uh, tricky idea, tricky domain, because it is not about science meeting literature. It is about science people meeting literature people. When people are involved, there is a bias. So the other bias 
there is is this course is um, a very very expensive a common indian student a common um, a commoner a person who is uh, learning or going through higher education by the dint of scholarships by government aid and everything will never be able to apply for this course because it is very very expensive um no other standard courses on science fiction thankfully we here are recording a course on science fiction so every one of us can come together in this single platform and give science fiction a standing ovation which it truly deserves now let me tell you about the indian initiative on discussing science fiction when it comes to india we are doing a great uh, work of uh, when it comes to india we are contributing to the field of science fiction through multiple ways especially indian association for science fiction studies is a registered company uh, at bangalore the headquarters is at ba bangalore and um, it's called iasfs founder president of this company is dr purushottaman k s secretary general is dr srinar hari this particular association this particular organization is the single most powerful and influential organization in india which every year conducts an international conference where all the science fiction enthusiasts from all the parts of the world from all the corners of our country gather discuss and debate issues related to science fiction issues related to science and fiction science in fiction and science fiction you see it is a word game really there are multiple ideas in this genre so the conference that is held every year is international conference on science fiction studies it's an annual conference and very recently uh, the science fiction indian science fiction day is and let me tell you about indian science fiction day which is observed on july 19th every year only for the past two years it is being observed and july 19th is the birthday of the famous astrophysicist indian astrophysicist chayant narlikar chayant narlikar is also a science fiction author but he is more famous in the science domain because of hoyle narlikar theory which is an extension of einstein's theory of relativity very interesting he is a very famous astrophysicist as well as science fiction author so the indian association for science fiction studies registered bangalore iasfs has uh the members of the indian association for science fiction studies registered at bangalore iasfs have uh, confirmed that they are going to celebrate 19th july the birthday of jayant narlikar as the indian science fiction day if any one of you is interested you can just visit this website iasfs.in here you will find the details of all the conferences and seminars they this particular association is organized here also you will find um contributions from various scientists from around the world who has uh, given their very precious minutes to address the conferences so you can just go and have a look at them now we come to one of the last points that we will be discussing today in this introductory lecture why study science fiction it's very interesting after all the discussion we had had so far we have not once discussed what is the reason why should we do it we can study classical literature we can study drama we can study comedy tragedy why science fiction really let me tell you about the sustainable development goals if you just go and google sdg 9 you will find that there is this unesco document that by uh, year i think 2025 or uh, 2050 2050 all the countries 
are ordered or rather uh, all the countries have signed a document that they will bring the 17 sustainable development goals to full implementation in all the countries. That is, there are 17 goals set by UNESCO and goal number 9 is industry, innovation and infrastructure. That means all of the individual citizens of all the countries who have signed that document, who have signed that um, pledge that yes, we are going to do that, all the countries, the citizens will be required to have uh, an innovative outlook, a scientific outlook. Even if you are an art student, you are a commerce student, you must have some scientific knowledge and thereby you must be able to analyze data. It is not anymore that I am a literature student, I will stick to history. No, even if you are sticking to history, you must know about anthropology. You must know about sociology and once you are aware of all these aspects, you will be able to address a research. Remember, research is the key word that the current education system is following. So once you have all knowledge of all these domains, you will be able to give a better research output. So if you are studying a particular um, sociological issue, you will also know a little bit of economics and you will also know psychology. So whenever you are preparing the survey draft, you will keep in mind that the question should be like this, 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 this. Had you not had the knowledge of all those disciplines, you would not have made the questions which are very psychologically correct or which are very politically correct. So in order to have that entire knowledge, in order to have the whole knowledge and not compartmental knowledge, you need to have a little bit of scientific thinking, a critical thinking. And that can be done when you are reading science fiction. Because science fiction lets you or forces you to imagine a world, to imagine um, scientific events without having to study the e equations, the laws, the theorems. It brings science in the form of a story and presents it to you. Exploration of creative ideas. Of course, once you have an idea and you have a lot to discuss, science fiction is the best medium. Understanding the human condition. Science fiction, I have told you, is always somewhere or the other, it talks about humanity. Any form of literature you take, for example, has the element of metaphor in it or allegory. If you want, you can just go and Google metaphor and allegory. These are two analogies that uh, these are two types of um, devices, literary devices that we use in order to explain something in a different way. So this particular field of science fiction, if we are talking about cloning, if we are talking about time travel, space travel, everywhere, there will be a, a specific idea which is being served to us in a different disguise. So science fiction makes us aware of those ideas. But uh, it will also make us critically think about that story because in order to reach at the bottom or the heart of the story, we will have to go through a lot of layers. Removing that layer gives us that critical faculty and once you have reached the layer, you will find that it is all about human life. Social and cultural commentary. I have talked about this multiple times and there will be lectures uh, which will discuss all of these separately. Foresight and speculation. Spe foresight of course, if we are seeing into the future, if we are contemplating the future, it is foresight. Impact on popular culture. Science fiction has tremendous impact on popular culture. Once there is the three laws of robotics, it has 
made the entire it has changed the entire domain of science fiction now we have robots now we have androids which denies which defies the laws of robotics we will study that uh, in some upcoming lecture interdisciplinary connections i told you in our present nep 2020 national education policy 2020 uh, there is this clause where the department of education government of india is asking us that you must have um, at least some knowledge or you may have the option to have some knowledge about computer to have some knowledge about programming to have some knowledge about coding even if you are an art student even if you are a commerce student then we have cultural literacy when we talk about the life forms the alien species that one planet encounters the alien invasion that is happening on earth earth people going to other planets and uh, interacting with alien species isn't it a cultural interaction our culture is different their culture is different but when these two people interact there is a kind of cultural interaction and acceptability if the aliens are becoming our friends then we are also propagating that cultural acceptability throughout the works and of course critical thinking that we have discussed many times these are some questions that i believe that you must go through in order to confirm that you have learned some things from this lecture some very basic key points that you need to remember can you answer all of these just have a look at it what do you understand by the term science fiction discuss science and fiction separately and then merge the two ideas how is hugo gunsback related to the field of science fiction who are the potential recipients of the hugo awards what are the most prominent themes in science fiction name some notable men women and non binary science fiction authors which country do you think has the maximum number of science fiction authors discuss the current situation of science fiction studies with reference to higher academics why do you think you need to study science fiction what is the situation of indian science fiction who is jayant narlikar i hope that once you are able to answer all these questions you will feel more confident to go on with this course feel free to discuss it with friends to encourage your uh, peers encourage your friends in school college universities to understand this field to look at it to know it and finally to accept the interdisciplinary nature of studies this is the key concepts this is the key idea that we are going to have in future so let us embark on this i have prepared a list of reading materials for you the references are here if you want to have some very good basic ideas on science fiction these are the books this is one of my favorite writers that i uh, strongly suggest that you read apart from that we have asimov we have henlin we have mark bold we have uh, thomas dish and we have john clute thank you very much for watching this i hope uh, we will be doing a lot more other fun stuff and gaining a lot of information about science, scientific things and science approach to literature, literature approach to sciences in the upcoming lectures. Thank you very much. Stay tuned.